The creative contributions of women in classic cinema aren't given enough oxygen. Yes, we talk about women in the film industry when they're sexy or they're tragic, or they're sexy and tragic, when their daughters stab their boyfriends or when they get nude in movies, but women gave much more to cinema than just tears and titillation. There are some women in classic Hollywood who blaze career paths into aspects of the industry that men dominated since the Lumiere brothers first filmed their factory workers. Ida Lupino was one of those women. Let's talk about her. Ida Lupino was the only Hollywood actress of the classic era who transitioned to a dual career as both an actor and a director. As a director in the 1950s, she created personally meaningful movies, which were interesting but not financially successful. In the movies she directed, she tackled topics that mainstream Hollywood studios avoided. So who was Ida Lupino? She was born in London in 1918 to a theatrical family, which included her father, Stanley Lupino, and her cousin, Lupino Lane. Her mother, Connie Emerald, was a stage actress. Ida started out on the stage in the early 30s and made several films for Warner Brothers British Film Studios before being brought to Hollywood in 1933. Unfortunately, Hollywood in the 30s had its perils. Ida Lupino caught polio, swimming in a contaminated swimming pool in 1934. Polio was a debilitating and at the time incurable disease. Ida Lupino didn't know if it would lead to crippling paralysis, but while recovering, she had an epiphany that would eventually change her life and the arc of her career. In a 1942 interview, she said, I realized that my life and my courage and my hopes did not lie in my body. If that body was paralyzed, my brain would still work industriously. If I weren't able to act, I would be able to write. And even if I weren't able to use a pencil or typewriter, I could dictate. After this setback, her movie career moved on. She did High Sierra with Bogart in 1941, a quirky little drama called Moon Tub with Jean Gabon in 1942, which at the start was directed by Fritz Lang before he left the project, and a lot of smaller, forgettable films for Warner Brothers, usually in roles rejected by Betty Davis. But she had a bit of fun as well. She did this in Thank You, Lucky Stars with George Tobias and Olivia de Havilland. In 1948, she made my favourite movie in her career, a crime drama which also starred Richard Widmark and Cornell Wilde, and it was called Roadhouse. Ignore the Patrick Swayze movie of the same name, there's nobody in that film that's tougher than Ida Lupino's lounge singer Lily Stevens in the 1948 version. She's smart, wisecracking, she sings with her own voice, unlike her lounge singer role the previous year in Raoul Walsh's The Man I Love, where her voice was dubbed by Peg Lacentra. Again, this couldn't happen again. This is that once in a lifetime. This is the thrill divine. And she even makes a bikini out of bandanas. Ida Lupino made the love triangle between Lily the deranged and titled Roadhouse owner Jeff D, played by Widmark, and his manager Pete, played by Cornell Wilde, really work. Lily interacts with men on her own terms, which makes the role seem refreshingly contemporary to a modern audience. The ending doesn't quite stick to Lanny, but it's a tight, well-scripted little B-picture that Ida Lupino made unforgettable. She found her time under contract with Warner Brothers difficult. Like Betty Davis, she spent a lot of time on suspension for not taking roles she didn't like, and while on these contractual hiatuses, she used the time to learn filmmaking and direction. As she said, she was bored on set while someone else was doing the interesting work. In 1949, Ida Lupino and her then husband, Collier Young, made their own production company. They wrote and produced a movie, a drama about a young woman who becomes pregnant out of wedlock, called Not Wanted. The director of the film, Elmer Clifton, had a heart attack and couldn't continue. He died of a stroke later that year. Ida Lupino finished directing the film, but left it in Clifton's name out of respect. In the same year, she directed her first movie in her own right, again with a script by herself and Collier Young, a film called Never Fear, 
which is about a dancer who contracts polio and has to find a way to move on with her life after the disease. It was very much a personal project for Ida Lupino for obvious reasons. In 1950, she wrote and directed her strongest film, Outrage, only the second Hollywood movie to address the subject of rape, after the Oscar-winning Johnny Belinda in 1948, which, by the way, was directed by the same guy who did Roadhouse, Jean Nicolesco. Lupino's movie, with less than a tenth of the budget of Johnny Belinda, handled the subject from a female point of view. It's a hard-boiled woman's picture, a type of movie nobody but Lupino ever made. It doesn't shy away from the psychological issues and deals with them in an adult way. When she made On Dangerous Ground for RKO in 1951 with Robert Ryan, Lupino took over some of the directing while director Nicholas Ray was ill. In 1951, she directed Hard, Fast and Beautiful, a sports movie about a female teenage tennis prodigy. It starred Claire Trevor and Sally Forrest's mother and daughter. The script was by Martha Wilkinson, who had been famous as a female DJ, G.I. Jill, in the U.S. Armed Forces radio show G.I. Jive during the war. Hard, Fast and Beautiful made the bold conclusion that winning at sports is less important than living life on your own terms, an idea that goes a bit contrary to the narrative of most Hollywood sporting movies, even to this day. In 1953, Ida Lupino directed The Hitchhiker, co-written with Collier Young, a tough film noir about a psychotic hitchhiker played by William Talman, who kidnaps a pair of vacationing businessmen played by Edmund O'Brien and Frank Lovejoy. This was the first full-on film noir movie directed by a woman, and it is rock solid. Like many of the movies Ida Lupino directed, it was based on a true story, and Lupino went to the effort of interviewing the two men involved in the case, as well as their kidnapper. Also in 1953, she made The Bigamist, starring herself, Joan Fontaine, and again Edmund O'Brien, which takes a complex and nuanced look at the titular character played by O'Brien and the effects his perceived crime of bigamy has on himself and his two wives. And like Outrage, this is a tough, hard-boiled women's movie which doesn't shy away from the issues. None of these movies that Lupino made with Collier Young were financially successful, but over the decades they've become important in the history of cinema, and re-evaluation of them in the modern era reveals Ida Lupino's skill as both a storyteller and a director. The only other feature film she made as a director was a 1966 comedy, The Trouble with Angels, starring Hayley Mills and Rosalind Russell. In the intervening years, her work as a director was done mostly on the small screen. Ida Lupino was the only woman to star in one episode of the classic Twilight Zone and direct another. She worked on other episodic television series, including Gilligan's Island, Thriller, The Rifleman, and Anne Francis' cool but short-lived female private eye series, Honey West. All through these years and into the 1980s, Ida Lupino continued to work as an actor in TV and cinema, but sadly illness plagued her later career. She died in 1995. Ida Lupino was a trailblazer. She manoeuvred through the sexism and cultural politics of Hollywood on her own terms. She made movies on important themes at a time when her contemporaries were too scared to. She showed that films from a woman's point of view, made by a woman, were of equal value to the art created by men. It's fitting that she has two stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. One for her work as an actor, and the other for her work as a director. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please consider subscribing and clicking the like button. If you'd like to support this channel, you can go to patreon.com slash paleocinema and donate as little as $1 US a month to help out. I'll see you next week, and I may well have another one of my movie marathon videos to do. I'm looking forward to that, so I'll see you then.